What's up, Kao Gang? Welcome back to Statics. So let's do this uh, moment of inertia problem. So we're trying to find two things. We're trying to find x prime, which is basically the center of mass, y bar, along the x-axis, or basically, you know, where is the center of mass in the y direction? Where is that axis at? Then we're going to find the moment of inertia around x prime. So you might be wondering why are we doing this? Well, this is actually a really useful thing that we're going to use later when we get to mechanics and materials and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, we need to find y bar, which the equation here is, we did this in the last chapter, so hopefully you remember how to do this. But we're gonna sum up all of the center of masses times their area for the individual shapes, and then we're gonna add up the whole area of the shape to just find y bar. So first of all, what I did is I took the shape and I simplified it into another shape, which is this here. So this is a uh, two rectangles, one stacked on top of each other, so I'll label that one and label that too, so those are our two shapes. So let's find the y bar by doing our equation. So we have, let's start with number one. So we're gonna start with y bar prime, which is the center of mass of this shape. So it's 50 meter, millimeters tall, so its center is gonna be half of that, 25 millimeters high. But of course, we're not starting from the bottom here. Our neutral x-axis is down here on the bottom. So we're gonna to need to go 250 millimeters up, then plus 25 millimeters up. So it's actually going to be 275 millimeters is where our y bar prime for the shape number one is going to be. Then we're going to multiply it by its area, which is just base times height, so 50 times 300. And that's our first shape. So now we need to add it up to our second shape. So the second shape is lying, its base is right on the x-axis, so it's just going to be half of its height, 125. That's half of 250. Then we're going to multiply it by its base times its height, so 50 times 250. Now we just need to sum up the whole area, so we're going to do the area of this top rectangle, which is base times height, and then we're going to add it to our next one, which is base times height. Cool, so this is our equation for y bar, and I'll write it up here, whatever we get, y bar is equal to 207 millimeters, so that's one of our answers. So there we go, down half the problem. So now, we need to find the moment of inertia. So I'm going to draw what this is going to look like. So 207, probably like right around here. So this is, you know, x prime. This is y bar. Oh, so now let's do our central, or our little axis theorem is what it's called. Take this chair. So parallel axis theorem, I have it written right there. Uh, we're going to start with i of x. So we want to find it around our, uh, this x prime axis, so, so that x prime. So first of all, what we have first is i bar x prime. So what is i bar? Well, i bar is something you find in the back of the book. It's different for all the different kind of shapes. Um, I'm gonna write it right here. So i bar x is equal to 1 12th base height cubed. So this is what you'll find in the back of the book if you look up what i bar is for a rectangle. You'll pretty much want to maybe not memorize these, but know where to find them. And then for the test, you might want to memorize it. So we're going to just go ahead and solve it. So we're doing the first shape here. So it's 1 12th, I forgot about the 1 12th. Its base is 300 millimeters. And its height is 50 millimeters. So we're going to do 50 cubed. Nice. And then now we're going to add the second part of the central axis theorem. So we're still on shape number one. So we're going to add it to its area. Its area is just base times height, or times 50, and then distance y squared. So what is distance y? Well, we found the center of mass. We found y bar here, right, which is our x prime axis. So that is the center of mass of our shape. Now we're looking for what's the distance between uh, this axis here and this axis here. So this is the center of mass of shape number one. So what we're looking for when we're saying distance y is the distance in the y direction from the center of mass of this shape to the center of mass of this shape. Now we can do that with some simple subtraction. And the subtraction that I'm talking about is we want to take the center of mass of that top shape, which we found to be 275, and then we're going to subtract it from the center of mass that we found, 207. So if you do the math on this, basically what it's saying is this is 275 and this is 207. So if you take the bigger distance and subtract it from the smaller distance, you'll find the distance in between them. Right, that makes sense. So there we go, so we found this for the first one. Now let's do it for the second rectangle. 
So the second rectangle, we're gonna do again, 112th base is 50 millimeters and tithe is 250 millimeters cubed. All right, then we're gonna add it to the area. So the area is 50 times 250. And then now we're gonna do the same thing, distance y squared. So the distance of this one, right, the center mass of this is 150, or it's 125 millimeters since the whole height is 250. So we know that this is 125 millimeters. And we're looking for this distance now. This is distance y. So if we take 207, which is where this bar is at, and subtract 125, we're gonna get the distance between those two. So this is our final equation for how to find f r, r by the moment of inertia. So i h prime, if you do this, it'll be 222 times 10 to the sig. Oh, years to the fourth. And that's our final answer for the moment of inertia around our new central axis. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I appreciate the support and sticking through the whole video. If you want more help with some moment of inertia questions, check out my statics playlist. And uh, yeah, check out my channel for more problems. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.